All right, cool. All right. So uh, again, thanks so much, guys. And uh, my name is Chad Pogracki. I'm the founder, president of Living Lands and Waters, which is an organization dedicated to cleaning up America's rivers. So what Living Lands and Waters is, it's a river cleanup organization dedicated to cleaning up. Um, we also plant a lot of trees and we also do um, a lot of education for students. Um, I started it in 1997 with just one small boat here in the Quad Cities and expanded out. What it's built up to is the only river cleanup operation like in the world. We have uh, six barges, two towboats, cranes, excavators, and I've had the distinct pleasure of working uh, over with over 124,000 people side by side since I started, put on over 1,400 river cleanups around the country and removed, uh, as of three weeks ago, over 13 million pounds of garbage out of America's rivers. Um, and in addition to that, uh, as Jay showed, uh, we do a lot of tree plantings. We give a lot of trees away. We have a nursery here in Davenport, Iowa, and, um, and we have either given away or planted by the end of this April, it'll be 1.9 million oak trees. Essentially, oak trees create food for wildlife. So that was the basis for planting more trees on the islands of the upper Mississippi River. Um, but, um, you know, I could go on and on about that, but that's for a different presentation. But I thought something that uh, is exciting in, in coming to the Quad Cities and um, more aligned uh, maybe with, with your passion or at least gives you a a different point of view would be uh, the, the Bison Bridge. Um, before I get into the details about this and what, what I think it's gonna do for the area and the river, um, and certainly, you know, add to your passion, I just wanna say, um, you know, I don't have a lot of time um, and I respect people's time. So if I didn't think this project was uh, moving forward in, in a very big way, I, I would never waste anybody's time. So, um, and, uh, but I think what I hope to do is give this wild idea more of a perspective on why it's important for, for the Quad Cities in particular and the Mississippi River. So um, not sure how many people have heard of, of, of of Bison Bridge, but essentially um, it we are trying to save the Interstate 80 bridge where it crosses the Mississippi River because Illinois Department of Transportation and Iowa Department of Transportation in the next five or six years are going to build a new one. And um, their original plan was to just demolish it, blow it up, but uh, we are trying to do something one of a kind in the world with it and make it a um, uh, give a different vantage point of the Mississippi River, do some unique things with it. So um, let's just go into Interstate 80 real quick, or the, let's go into the Mississippi River. Most of you know all about the Mississippi River, but I just wanna state some facts about it because they're so impressive and it's always good to remind ourselves how important it is. So the Mississippi River uh, you know, uh, is over 2,300 miles in length. It drains 1.2, million square miles of the U.S., which encompasses 31 states and two Canadian provinces. As many of you know, 40% of all the migratory birds use it as a flyway in North America. It's over 265 different species of fish, 185 different kinds of reptiles, 80 different kinds of mussel shells. So below the surface, above the surface, it to me, it's a 2,300 mile corridor for wildlife. Um, and then this bridge I'm talking about is where it Interstate 80 and, and the Mississippi intersect by LeClaire, Iowa. If you're uh, not familiar with it, most of you probably are. So Interstate 80 is a pretty, uh, pretty unique um, as far as interstates go. It wasn't built as a highway or necessarily an interstate. It was actually built as a transcontinental freeway under the Eisenhower administration. This thing is amazing, okay? It's 2,899.6 miles long. It starts downtown New York City, which is certainly a point of interest. As you were to get in a car and drive out of New York City, you'd be coming across the state and you, you would remember certain things on that trip if you were gonna drive coast to coast. Certainly crossing the Mississippi River would be one since it's one of the most famous, if not the most famous river in the world. You would look to your right or left, whichever as you're crossing it, you would remember that whether you're a kid or a parent or whatever. Now you would remember also going across the Great Plains, the Rocky Mountains for sure, the desert, then this dead ends in downtown San Francisco in the Pacific Ocean. So certainly the Mississippi where it crosses is where we're talking about today. 
And so <clears throat> in general, in the US, there's a big uh, movement to repurpose infrastructure. And I'll show you some other projects that are going on in the US and have been extremely successful. But for this, this is Interstate 80. And I wanna, I wanna thank John Deere for helping with this uh, particular picture and some of the other ones you'll see. So I went to John Deere and why they would care about a project like this for the Quad Cities is because John Deere and Alcoa and every small business and large business uh, around the area is having one, one big problem, having problems retaining young talent. Like John Deere tries to get people to move here and stay here and they have a problem with it, such as Caterpillar moving out of Peoria because it was a problem for them as well. So they're interested to make anything they can cooler and better around this area, something that it sets it apart and is unique. So, um, and you know, they, they put bunnies in there and flowers and birds and infrastructure and they did a great job. It's because people like flowers and bunnies and birds and so do I. So we're gonna throw that in there. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go to the next one. But the next picture is a picture of the Interstate 80 bridge. And if, and I took this picture because it's the most simplistic bridge there is. It's not like a 74 or some of the other ones with giant girders and a monstrosity. If it was anything but what it is as the most simplistic bridge, I, I wouldn't be doing this project. It wouldn't fit for this project, right? Okay, so there's a good picture of it, the river down there. You got the rest area in the, in the, in the, in the, in the distance there. So guys, when I'm talking about saving the bridge and a bison bridge, I'm not talking about just um, saving the bridge. I'm talking about the land on both sides of the river. You have uh, approximately 65 acres at the rest area in Illinois and another uh, over 30 acres of what you see there, another vantage point here. And also Iowa has land available as well over there. So you can kind of see the rest area um, on that first bluff beyond the clover leaf there. And so I'm talking about utilizing that. My first meeting with IDOT, um, they, they were so pumped on this project that they offered. They said, if this project move, moves forward, we would, we would give you the rest area 65 acres. So that was very promising. And that was actually my second meeting I ever had with uh, the official. So that would have thought, well, maybe we're on to something here. So, okay. Now, um, <clears throat> guys, why is this saving this bridge important? Well, saving bridges is certainly uh, maybe new for this area, but it's, but through my work at Living Lands and Waters and doing those 1400 cleanups around the country, I've lived under quite a few, every one of these bridge. Now I know that sounds like living under a bridge is not very uh, good, but in this case, I was living on my barge at Travels and um, and uh, seeing how people interact with these bridges they save. So let's go Purple People Bridge in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, uh, over a million people use that bridge in the first year. Chattanooga, Tennessee, notice the population is only 179,000 in Chattanooga, but again, they had over a hundred or over a, a million people uh, utilize that bridge. And then uh, last but not least, uh, the, the bridge in Louisville, Kentucky. If you're ever getting down that way, I would suggest to go to that bridge and check it out. It's one of the best examples of utilizing something that uh, was pretty much abandoned. Well, it was. It sat vacant for 75 years, and they turned it into something magnificent. I'll show some other pictures at the end. But all of these extremely successful and to me, not nearly as cool as uh, what I'm proposing here. So this is what I'm, I'm looking at more um, about doing with the bridge and um, just some points of interest. So I think this is the best picture, I think, that depicts what is in my head. Again, I will have lots of public input on this, so it might not uh, end up looking like this, but essentially a forest, forested bridge. Now, <clears throat> East, eastbound lane dedicated to people and connecting the two bike paths that are already there. The, the Iowa side bike path is almost to LeClaire, should be in the next few years, but the Illinois bike path already goes right past, it goes over 40 miles. So how do you get a forested bridge, okay? Uh, well, what you do is you cut the deck out, big squares, big planters, you cut the deck out, you displace that cement uh, that's there with big planters that have like a lip welded on them, they're steel and they fit right down in the deck. So they're 
the dirt is at ground level because the thing is earth's getting hotter and um, you know as you get older you don't want as much sunlight you want shade so if you're going to go up there you want as much shade as you can so there'll be opportunity for shade and sunlight plus we have a, a lot of solar on that bridge guys the eastbound lanes dedicated to you uh to humans and uh <clears throat> what it didn't say about interstate 80 is you have over 42,000 cars a day traveling across this bridge, right? And they're expecting almost double in the next 50 years. Um, and so you already have a built-in audience. And to me, I would love to give a better opportunity for people to view the river um, that are passing through. And so, um, and I'll get to some of the bigger plans of why I think people will stop and how how this, this, this bridge we uh, paid for. So I'm going to play a quick video um, before I do the westbound lane be dedicated to a small herd of bison, which sounds pretty crazy. I know it does. And that's OK. I used to fight it like, hey, this is a crazy, wild idea, but it's actually out of function just as much as it is out of something different. The function is that bridge is big, a lot of cars on it, 65 foot wide to be exact. We don't need 65 feet for humans to, to go. Half of that is just fine. And then when you also put dirt on a bridge and have grass on, it also protects the bridge from the elements. Vibration and sunlight and the weather are what hurts a bridge over time. So it's out of function. So yes, a small herd of bison, we're just talking nine or 10, not like a, a, a dances with wolves or anything like that. And um, they would be able to graze in Iowa graze over to Illinois and um, and be able to live there, but it'd be something different. And um, so I wanna play a quick video and we'll go from there. You have an opportunity to help create a brand new national park on the Mississippi River. Introducing the Bison Bridge Project. Every day, 42,000 vehicles travel across the Interstate 80 Bridge over the Mississippi River through the Quad Cities. In the near future, the current bridge is slated to be demolished and replaced by a new, modern bridge. Instead of blowing it up, we want to save the I-80 bridge. We will repurpose the bridge for the region, the river, and the country. We will turn it into a multi-use site for tourists, locals, and bison. Yeah, you heard that right, bison. We'll have a small herd of wild bison and a bison expert to manage them. And with approximately 100 acres of grazing land in Illinois and Iowa, the westbound lane of the Bison Bridge will serve as the longest man-made wildlife crossing in the world. The Bison Bridge will celebrate the Mississippi River, the prairie, the native wildlife, and the history that makes this region special. The Bison Bridge will improve the quality of life in the Quad Cities area and become a treasured destination for people from all over the world. Chad Pergracki, president and founder of Living Lands and Waters, has been working on this vision for 20 years. With your help, we can create the Bison Bridge. Now, all we need is your signature. Let's create a one-of-a-kind landmark to attract visitors for generations. Join the herd today. Like, share, and follow for more at bisonbridge.org. Well, that gives you a, a, a snapshot uh, of the vision. And um, could everybody see that okay? Everybody see that good and hear it? Good. So <clears throat> uh, quite a unique project. And I do want to, you know, answer any questions. Um, guys, this is beyond an, an idea at this point. I have a team of seven people that have been working on this for or behind the scenes for over two years. I kicked this off two years ago. The actual gentleman, um, our engineer, um, was the top engineer for the state of Illinois. He ran District 2. He was in charge of Newbridge. When he retired two weeks later, every engineering firm wanted him, but he didn't want to do that. The only thing he picked to help out was this project, and he's been working with us, like I said, for over two years. And been, uh, he keeps me realistic. Um, that's that's what uh, everybody says. And uh, so, um, but, um, and then... Um, I have the one of the top consultants for infrastructure that actually was my college roommate, believe it or not, 
that has helped with his uh, knowledge and, and all his contacts move this forward in a big way. And then we just have uh, 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 on the five other people with different skill sets, marketing and, and uh, all of that been driving this forward. So, and we, we've partnered with a couple engineering firms as well and um, a, a, a giant architecture firm out of St. Louis done projects all over the world. So um, that being said, I know I just threw a lot at you and, um, but related to what you guys do and, and especially when it comes to birds, I kicked this off uh, two years ago and somebody emailed me and said, hey, I love bison. That sounds amazing, but don't forget about the birds. And I thought it stuck with me the entire time. Like, yeah, how simple is that? What a great, you know, that thank you because um, we have. So one of the things we're doing specifically for birds is we're going to, we're working on making this the most bird friendly bridge in the world. And uh, so we, we just uh, Autobahn, Illinois Autobahn, we just partnered with them. Um, and they just wrote a letter on, on the bridge's behalf to the governor. And they also um, gave us the, their top bird consultant, which we're going to hire to help us make it as bird friendly as we possibly can, swallow houses and whatever else this gentleman can come up with. Um, and we're going to add some other experts as well. But we do. That's one of our goals. And because um, we think it's a great way to um, view the Mississippi River and, and why wouldn't we make it a bird friendly bridge? It really probably doesn't take much more. And uh, if it does, we'll just make it happen. So let's talk about money. Okay. So luckily, this bridge is not just about the bridge and it's not just about the Quad Cities. What you heard on there is the national park. That is our A plan is to put, create a new national park. When people think of national parks, they typically think of great expansive land grabs out west, what have you. But the honest truth is it doesn't have to be that at all. There's actually a herd of bison, nine bison down in Oklahoma on 90 acres, right? So, but let's just take the one closest that everybody knows of and has probably been to, and that's the St. Louis Arch. Now, <clears throat> you might think this is a wild idea, which that's fine, fair enough. But I'll tell you what was a really wild idea is this, the, the concept of St. Louis Arch. So in 1964, gentleman had a great idea. So he went to the city of St. Louis, to the city council, and he said, okay, got this idea, right? Here's what I want to do. I want to destroy 235 buildings that are on your riverfront down there. And I want to take all the riprap, the building materials, the bricks and everything. And I want to dump it for five miles along the riverbank in each direction to hold the riverbank back. Then what I want to do is get bulldozers, scrape the 65 acres that would be left there. And then I want to build a 367 foot stainless steel arch that you can actually get in little bathtubs and ride up in to look out little windows. And uh, I mean, guess what, guys? And here's the kicker. He wanted the city to pay for it. Guess what? They did. And they did tear down 235 buildings. They did scrape it and they did build the arch. Now, fast forward. Okay, such a wild idea then. Fast forward though, when you drive through St. Louis or you live in, I've lived in St. Louis quite a bit through my travels. <clears throat> there is not a car dealership. There is not a business that doesn't have an arch on its logo. It is the symbol of St. Louis. It is a gateway to the West and nobody thinks about what a wild idea it was. They only think about what it is and what it's done. And it's a symbol of when you see it on 4th of July and everything. So relating to this, you don't need a giant expansive land. What more likely would happen is this would be uh, a national monument run by the National Park Service, just like the arches. Is it doable? It absolutely is. Um, you know, Burt's Bees, like the lip, lip stuff and face stuff, it's um, like lotions and things. The lady sold that, um, just just uh, bought a mountain and then gave it to the National Park Service and they did exactly that, made it a national monument. And that's been done in 2017. That's the most recent one. So doable, yes. Plan B, which is much more politically uh, easier to do. And we've met with both DNRs and their staffs on each side, Illinois and Iowa, to make two state parks that meet in the middle. 
um, and they love the public-private partnership that uh, we're offering up on that. Um, and then Plan C would be Bison Bridge Foundation, which is a 501c3, takes this bridge and keeps it in perpetuity, does all the maintenance and everything. So anybody with the brain knows that maintenance and building something in maintenance is expensive. So here's what we have going for us. It is not just some random interstate. It is Interstate 80, the transcontinental freeway. Ask yourself, what company uses Interstate 80, all their products? The better question is, what company does not use Interstate 80? Every company uses Interstate 80, from FedEx to UPS to every trucking company there is out there. Let's just take a very small probably a truck company you've never heard of, but it's called Bison. We'll take Bison Transport. Well, it sold last year for $453 million to a Canadian company. They're actually in the next two weeks opening an office in Des Moines. Guess who I'm going to go see? But anyway, uh, my point there is, <clears throat> as my board of directors told me when I pitched this to them, they were like, money is not going to be the problem. The only one time I've asked one person because they're of interest, because they uh, are into the Mississippi River. My first commitment was $4 million right off the bat. But think of every trucking company, uh, and really this is about infrastructure. And because it is a national symbol, it's a, it's a, to me, it's a project of the nation. Um, my plan is not to be sucking money out of the Quad Cities, but bringing money to the Quad Cities. And, uh, and, and the thing about a national park is people will make it a destination. And I love this area. I love the Mississippi River. And I believe we need this uh, as far as a community, people coming here, staying here, spending money here. And um, so that's one of the reasons I'm doing it. Uh, but again, my main focus is to give people uh, a view of the Mississippi River that you typically don't have. And so <clears throat> now here's the good news. And I just, we just kind of honed in this in the last six months. We didn't realize how lucky we were with timing and timing is everything, right? So how do you pay for it? And how do you keep it maintained? Good news, okay? If you fast forward, and that's where my mind is, it's in the future, right? <clears throat> if you fast forward 15 years, let's go 10 years from now, a third of all the cars on the interstate will be electric, right? You look at what Ford's done in the last year, they're getting rid of a lot of their engines, they're all going electric. Okay, now people are going to plan to stop here. The bison was to get add something else and el another element that, uh, you know, people could stop and check out the wildlife and it would get people to stop here in the quad cities, get people to focus on the river. But what I didn't realize was how all of those cars and those people traveling are going to have to plan their trips out. And he, that's a great way to maintain it. So we're making this the biggest regional hub between Iowa and Illinois. Uh, for plugins. So that's what we advertise. You can do this. And when you come, uh, you can actually go into a rest area. And I will admit, the building you see in front of you is really big. That's just what the architects came up with. It will not be that big. That's a lot to heat and all that. But cars plug in, we charge extra money. Um, and that will help perpetuate keeping the bridge maintained in perpetuity. Um, that's the inside. Again, this is way big. But what I do want to have is a fish tank in there of all the river fish. So I went up and met with the Dubuque River Museum, partner with them, seeing it because I want to promote them and every other great thing, the figgy, every, every place that's cool around here. We want to be able to have an opportunity to promote it for what it should be, but definitely have a fish tank with the, the, all the fish in, in the river. Um, so Going to a couple other cool things, just checking on your screen there. These are some other wildlife crossings, some really cool bridges, yeah. um, yes. different projects going. And uh, going to the next one, I think there's one more. Is there one more? Yeah, right there. Sorry. Okay. So if you look at this, we got New York up in the uh, left-hand corner. You have the High Line in New York, which is wildly successful. Um, we met with those that had the people who started that, ask them the pitfalls, what do we need to do for this? What's the best way to fund this, all that. We also, the one under this, the 11th Street 
uh, bridge in Washington, D.C. We met with them. That's a $90 million project. We, we met with them uh, two weeks ago. Um, very supportive of what we're doing. All of them are like, to their knowledge, it's never been done before what we're proposing, the sort of wildlife and humans. Um, and all these are their projects. Okay. Let me just wrap it up, answer questions. But here's the thing. <clears throat> Guys, when I look at this, I think, why can Washington, D.C. have something cool like that? Why can the High Line in New York City, why can they have that? Well, why can the Netherlands and why can Hong Kong and all these other places have all these amazing projects? Why can't we? And the truth is, my mindset is we can and we already do. The bridge is already there. Where they're going to spend over $30 million to blow the bridge up and squander the opportunity or we're going to rethink this like, hey, we should do something great for wildlife and great for people and do something one of a kind so people stop here and it keeps the Quad Cities on the map. So that to me is is my mindset and where it's at. And um, I I think honestly, guys, I could probably because of my team uh, of people that have been amazing, including Kim. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be able to put this video on to tell you the truth. Um, I think I can probably take a good shot at answering all of your questions because we've 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 went we've been spending a lot of time the last two and a half years on this. So um, yeah, I think I'll just end it there and and. Um, and answer anything that you guys might have. Thank you. Yep. Is that good? Okay, it's good. Hey, Should be uh, better? I, you've got me so excited. It's unbelievable. Um, good. I got a lot of questions, though, and I'm sure we have other questions coming here. What about the, the plan to replace the 80 bridge? Yeah. Is the plan still to have it sitting next to your project? So uh, there are four options right now. Um, two of the options go right over the top of, of where Bison Bridge would be. And, and uh, the other two go, one goes upstream and one goes downstream. We don't think the two options that go over the bridge are going to be, they're going to be, uh, we don't think that they'll, they'll end up happening. And here's why. Because what they would do is, one, they said in the meeting twice that it's not conducive for the contractor. That means it's a difficult build, but what it really means is it's it's expensive for the taxpayers, right? Uh, so that's one thing. Two, it would either slow traffic to a grinding halt or, it, or they'd close the bridge, which would cut off 23 miles, mainly in Iowa, of all those businesses. It would definitely hurt LeClaire. Um, and even as far out as Northwest Boulevard and the truck stops and all of that. So we don't think they're going to do anything like that to disrupt the business. That's not me talking. That's the guy who ran the bridge. That's our consultants. And that's all the other engineering firms we have. We think that they're going to pick either upstream or downstream. Now, speaking of that, the downstream view, the rivers running east and west there, is amazing. You got the lock and dam, the, the sun sets right over it. It's beautiful. So that's one of the good things too, but related to your passion. I don't I don't have that picture of that magazine. But um, anyway, they'll build either upstream or downstream is what we think. We have nothing to do with where they put it. All we want is a shot to keep the bridge if they don't build the bridge right over the other one. So so, so the new bridge could be a quarter mile or a half a mile or a mile away it, but is that what you're saying no it could be as close as 75 to 100 feet right okay which would probably be what the best situation well here here's here's actually either or is fine now what idot is worried about is safety safety of the motorists part of the reason why they're building the new bridge with wider shoulders and all that one thing they don't want happening is people looking at the Bison Bridge, because of course you're going to look at Bison Bridge if you're driving. So what do you got to have? You got to have a fence. What we want to do going back to charging at those charging station is the fence and the bridge is over 3,500 feet. We would put solar panels on that fence all the way across the bridge, which then would produce, go back into the grid and be able to self-perpetuating money and be able to charge extra for those cars coming across. But that would, that would, that would serve as a safety uh, 
thing as well. So that's, I think, um, at least that's our plan. Illinois is on board. Uh, Iowa is on board. Uh, so right now they're in the NEPA process. So it's a federal process that they have to um, they have to do, and they can't say whether they're on board or not. But um, are they are taking the, the project serious? They know that the community wants it. And to my knowledge, they've never had a meeting in regards to a bridge with more people that got on board. We had over 500 people in the first five minutes at their meeting, and uh, they couldn't keep up because there was enough questions not related about Bison Bridge in support of it on the first one. And uh, they're going to have, I think, their third meeting uh, coming up in the next couple months. But um, um, they haven't said anything that they're not for it but they truthfully can't under law so which is totally fine and we respect the process right. again we have nothing to do with where the bridge goes because the bridge somebody's going to lose their house if that bridge goes either up or down and i don't want to be any part of that because guys i live right there my parents that's where i grew up i still live right right by the bridge as well so you know i respect that but again if they keep the bridge or if there's an opportunity i'm keeping it but i don't i don't play anything to do with where the new bridge is going like LeClaire has picked where they want it but in other cities have but I'm I'm staying out of that you know I got another tough question for you okay I I know your heart and soul is definitely in this project yeah what do you say 60 40 50 50 70 30 what's your gut feel 100 percent I love it no, no, there's no, I mean, here's the deal. I'm not asking for taxpayer money. We either spend and waste taxpayers money on blowing this opportunity up or we do something cool. All the politicians I've spoke to are totally on board, including Dick Durbin. Um, I mean, every, we, 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 we have Republican support. We have Democrat support. Nobody has, has said anything bad about it because it totally makes sense when you put this in a bigger context, you know? And, um, you know, and this isn't just about, it's about the future too. And, and right. what this, will, and so when you, and then the amount of money from tourism that would be generated and, and basically to me is like, you know, we want to put the quad cities and keep it on the map is, is one thing too. So there is, there's a lot of support guys, uh, for this and, and moving forward. I, I'm at a hundred percent. Otherwise, again, I, I would never waste anybody's time. Um, but by chance, if they build that bridge over the old bridge and it doesn't happen, I can tell you what, it will not be from a lack of trying. But if we get the green light, we will definitely hit the ground running. We're already in full motion running. So that's kind of where I'm at on it all. So as 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 a community of photographers, our best way to help support you would be to spread the word, right? Yeah, totally. And just you know, um, hopefully, you know, uh, out of this presentation, you kind of see it in a, in a bigger vision. I, I see that picture you showed of all the people at the lock shooting. Right. I can see that happening all the time, you know, and it's a great pace, place to meet. There's some shelters on there. You're at the bird's eye level, not a bird's eye view. I mean, that, that's kind of a cool way too. And honestly, what I would like to do too is take some Osage trees and put them, I know it sounds crazy, but why wouldn't I try it? But put some old sage trees out in the water, the kind that don't rot for a hundred years, stick them down there. And uh, I mean, make them perfect for either osprey nests or, or, or eagle nests. I mean, that'd be cool looking down on it, have those, you know, those kinds you put a quarter in, you know, and you can look because people want to look at nature, sure. you know, all the time. They just don't have an opportunity because they live in cities or whatever, but this is a wonderful opportunity. And, and by the way, if, if anybody has an expertise in, in nature, birds, whatever it is, we we'll, we would be happy to to work with you to, to make this um, or viewpoints or whatever. Uh, this is this is about people. And, and uh, if you've got a passion for it, we, we would love for you to we'd love the input. But yes, be champions of it. Post it. Just talk to people. I mean, that's still word of mouth is the best way, you know. And uh, so, yeah. Um, is there any other questions or anything? Well, when do you think this project will 
start? I mean, when are they going to build the bridge? You said something like three to five years. Yeah, like which is great. Wow. That's fine. It gives us plenty of time to have a great plan, put all the public comment together. You know, um, um, the timing, at least what we've been told, is great timing for how we're doing it and what we're doing and the steps we're doing it. Um, yeah, five or six years. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's going to take two and a half years for construction. Um, and if you're on the call thinking, wow, they've been talking about 74 for 25 years. Well, here's the difference. The Illinois gas tax put gas tax put this on the fast track. Guys, this is going in in five years. It's not a they, the money's already there. They're doing it. It's not going to be you know, whether they are or not. And plus uh, the infrastructure spending bill has added to that as well. So that it's, it's, uh, it's happening. It's not going to take the nearly the time. And, and this is what the, the state is telling everybody. And on those public meetings, it's not like I'm just uh, wishful thinking there. Cool. But it's a project for, you know, if it takes 10 years, that's okay. I mean, we're, we're, that, that's okay because this project's going to be there for a long time and have big impacts. Good. <clears throat> well, let's definitely keep a flow of information uh, uh, between ourselves as this moves on. And, uh, you know, I think I can speak for us photographers that, you know, we'll do everything we can uh, to support this. I think it's, it's a worthy project for our community. And, uh, you know, if it could give us a few more nature photos, uh, we're always going to love that. So uh, sure, nice, sure. nice, nice presentation. And, uh, and um, are there David, any more questions from anybody else? Um, you, you said in case, um, you know, people want to get involved or they, they have, you know, uh, um, uh, whatever a suggestion or a time to to help, and how how can we get in contact Bison with Bridge. you? Um, you can go to bisonbridge.org and just uh, put your name on there, and and uh, that's one thing too. Uh, just just say, hey, I want to help with whatever that might be. Um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll take all the help we can get. Um, you can also go and, and put your information in at, at bisonbridge.org. Uh, there's the video we have, I think over 40,000 people have signed up and um, guys, people are going to come from all over the world to see this. It's never been done before like this. And, and the, the reason I, I, I feel like that'll, that is true is because when I first kicked this off uh, two years ago, um, two years ago, like four days ago, anyway, um, I was doing more interviews outside the U.S., all over the world, just as much as I was inside the U.S., but people are going to come here. They're going to check it out. They're going to, they're, it's coming from the Mississippi River just as much as anything, and so that's what this is about. That, that suggests that there'd be a lot of development, hotels, restaurants on either side of the bridge. Do you, do you see that as part of the picture? It, I mean, if it's a really a destination, you can attract people that are going to want to stay, not just stop over to charge the car. I agree. And, and, and Leclerc is, is uh, I, I think this project, the landing pad would be in Illinois. There's much more land over here. Leclerc is set up for that. There's already hotels and Airbnbs in a downtown for sure, but uh, Illinois is not as much. So um, we're, we're uh, forming a team to help the city make make good zoning laws that don't impact uh, the people who live there for the negative, like more traffic and simple things you can do. And uh, it, we are very aware. And, and I, I, I honestly don't think a lot of people realize that this is going to, there's a lot of people that are going to stop here. We, we think uh, and, and enjoy it. And we want to make sure that it, 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 it um, adds to the quality of life around here and does not detract and, and believe me, I live right there. So I'm, I'm fully aware of it. And even like the lighting, you know, somebody comes in, builds a hotel that lives in New Jersey. They don't care about the lighting. They don't care about what it looks like. You should have strict laws on, you know, it should be like Animosa limestone and you can do certain things. Your lighting can only be this much and have this much footprint. Those are the things that aren't being uh, thought about that we're trying to help them think about and do. I mean, again, I live right by the bridge on the Illinois side. So 
I, I, I wanted to add to it, not, not detract. Okay, does, does that wrap it up for tonight, gang? Okay. If it does, one more thing, I just want to say, I'm building that new uh, floating classroom and uh, could easily give another talk sometime on living lands and waters and all that. But I'll just, two things. If you ever want to have your meeting on a unique space in person, please utilize it again, free of charge. You can walk right onto it. It's really nice spot. We'd love to have you. If you ever want to take a trip like a club and rent a small bus and come down to like the Ohio River or the Cumberland or some of the other rivers we're on, we'd be happy to host you and take you out in boats and or even here in the Quad Cities down in Andalusia. Um, all you got to do, Jay, is just ask. And uh, we were a yes organization. So, you know, whatever, just let us know and we'll, we'll make we'll make good things happen. And we appreciate the opportunity, guys. OK, well, th right. thanks for a great evening. Great presentation, Chad. I, I know I can speak for all of us. We're a hundred percent behind you. That's for sure. Thanks, guys. I appreciate appreciate what you do and uh, keep 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 doing the passion. So, thanks, Thank guys. You. Have a great Thank night. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.